Hey everybody, let's finish up our discussion on parallel RLC circuits. So if you have in parallel R, L, C, right, so resistor, inductor, capacitor, and let's say we consider the natural response. So you had some current source, let's say like this, so for a long time, like this, then what would happen? So for a long time, the inductor would hog all of the current. So when we close this switch here, effectively shorting out the current source, so then we basically suddenly disconnect it like this, then at that time at t equal to zero, things will change immediately, right? Well, the current through the inductor wouldn't change instantaneously, but we would need to know that information. We would need to know the current through the inductor at t equal to zero. Okay, we will also need to know the voltage over here at t equal to zero, and I mean, there are they're in parallel, but really there's energy stored in the inductor, right? Because there's current going around the coil. So there's energy stored in that magnetic field. And then there are, um, there's an electric field right between the parallel plates of the capacitor. So energy stored there. So we would need to know the voltage across this capacitor at T equal to zero. So to get numbers to solve with actual values, we would need to know all five of these things. We would need to know the values for the resistor, the inductor, the capacitor, and we would need to know the initial voltage here and the across the capacitor and the initial current through the inductor. So I'm just gonna make up numbers. Um, here, one, one, uh, I'm not saying these are realistic values. I'm just trying to make make it so that it's simple, make the math simple. Okay, so what's the voltage across here as a function of time? How do we do it? So from the previous videos, the second order ODE look like this. Four alpha, the Nieper frequency, like this, and then the undamped natural frequency, like this. Okay, so for um, the values that I just made up over here, alpha would be two, and omega would be one. Okay, so is this overdamped, underdamped, or critically damped? So the characteristic equation Characteristic equation is like this from the previous video. And then the roots of the characteristic equation, minus alpha, plus or minus square root, alpha squared minus omega squared. Okay, so there are two roots. Since alpha is larger than omega, this quantity here, right here is positive. So that means we have two real roots. So this is overdamped, right? This is overdamped, overdamped. So what's the solution from the previous video? Overdamped like this. Um, so I don't have to keep writing. So, so the numbers we have, we have two roots, right? It would be negative alpha plus square root of two squared minus one squared, negative alpha minus square root of two, two squared minus one squared, right? So we have two numbers, they're just numbers. We know the values already. So I'm just gonna write that over here. Okay, so this is for overdamped. The issue is we have two unknowns right here. So we need those numbers, how do we get it? you use these 
initial conditions. That's how. Use these initial conditions to solve for the two arbitrary coefficients. Okay, now how do we do that? Here's, we need to write two equations. Here's one equation, v at t equal to zero. Right, so that's a one e to the zero, which is one, plus a two e to the zero, which is one. Right, and then what is this? I, I mean, I just made up that number, right? It's something that you would already know. Okay, so we have one equation with two unknowns. We need one more equation, and that can come from dv dt at t equal to zero, which is, I don't know yet. So let's find dv by dt at as a function and then at t equal to zero. So all you do is take a derivative of this, right? Take a time derivative. So let's do that, right? Time derivative, s1, a, e to the s, t, and then take a time derivative of that. And there you go. Now evaluate at t equal to zero, s1, a1, e to the zero, s2, a2, e to the zero equals dv by dt at t equal to zero. Uh, we don't have that. How do we get this? Okay, note that for an inductor, okay, and then for a capacitor, all right, now take a look at these two. Which, look at this. Now, which of these two will be useful to us? This one, right? You see dv by dt right here. So that's what we wanna look at. We wanna look at the capacitor. So at t equal to zero, right? We want, uh, let me write over here. at t equal to zero, we need this information for the capacitor at t equal to zero. dv dt, right? So then I just move c over here, and then there we go. Because this information we have, right? That's five, oh, sorry, not yet. So. I mean, this is what goes right here, wrong thing. But then what's the current going through the capacitor at t equal to zero? We don't know. We know the current going through the inductor, but you see how the three of these are in parallel? So at t equal to zero, right? You have R, L, C, so at t equal to zero, we have, let's just do KCL for over here. So have the current for the resistor, the current for the inductor, the current for the capacitor, and we're interested when t equal to zero, at t equal to zero. Okay, so for the resistor, V over R, V at zero over R, for the inductor, we know it, right? It, it was given. Well, it has to be given, otherwise you can't solve. Okay, so we know it. This is known. This is known. And then the current through the capacitor, that's what we're looking for, right? So just move these on the other side of the equation. I see minus V over R plus I, like this. And again, right, this is known, this is known. So now look right here, right, let's just divide by C. And that is dV dt, okay? 
So look, see right there? That goes right there. So let me just rewrite it. Let me just rewrite it. Okay, I'll write both equations. Okay, and then equals that. Let's see. Okay, so here. One, I'll just circle this part. Two. Two equations, two unknowns. Because all everything else is given. S1, S2, we've got it. The volt initial voltage, the initial current, the value for the resistor, the value for the capacitor. Okay, so now you got A1 and A2. And then you just plug it in here and here, and that's the answer. Okay. Now, what about, let me change the numbers a little bit. Okay, so let's change the resistor to one half. Okay, so if I change the resistor to one half, um, maybe let me just move this where I have more space. Okay. And then my new values. Okay, so let's change the resistor a little bit. Okay, so if I do that, alpha will be one over two RC, which will be one. Okay, so now, and I'll leave everything else the same. So now look, that is, let me copy the characteristic equation. Okay. So now if alpha equals omega, this would be zero, which means we would have a repeated root. So it's negative alpha and negative alpha. So then this would be critically damped. And then from the previous video for critically damped, the solution looks like like this. Okay, and then we have two unknowns. How do you solve for those two unknowns? Use the initial conditions. All right, so then you go V at T equal to zero. So that's B1 E to the zero plus B2 times zero. Okay, so then that's it. There you go. So we got, and again, this is known, right? All right, so we solve for B1, that was, that was easy. Now, how do we get the other one? We need DV by DT at T equal to zero, which we don't know yet, but let's get the function and then solve it for t equal to zero. Okay, so how do we get this function? Just take this derivative. Let's do that right now. Derivative of this minus alpha b1 e to the minus alpha t. And this is a product, so we have to use the product rule, right? So then uh, let me take the derivative of this, which is one, and then leave this alone. And then I'll leave this alone and take the derivative of this. So that would be minus alpha e to the minus alpha t. Okay. So now we just evaluate this at t equal to zero. So minus alpha b1 e to the zero. Oh, this should have been a two right here. b2 e to the zero plus uh, zero. Okay, so there we go. And how, how do you get this? exactly like we did here. Where is it? Here, right here. This is this. So, there we go. All right, so we got two 
two equations, two unknowns. So for B1 and B2, once you have both numbers, it goes here and here, and there's your answer. Okay, one more. Let's, let me uh, move this around. Okay, let's change the values one last time. So let, let me make the resistor one. Okay, so then what would happen to our values over here? Um, so this would, omega would stay the same, but then alpha is one over two RC. So this will be one half. Okay, and then our uh, the roots of our characteristic equation looks like this. So then see alpha is less than omega, which means this is negative. So we'd have two imaginary roots. So then this would be under damped. And then just look at the previous video, the solution for under damped look like this. Okay, where omega d was this. Okay, so again, this is these are just numerical values already. Right, so this is also just some number. Uh, what would that number be? It will be um, let's see, one minus one fourth square. Um, no, I don't want to keep writing that. So just it's known, right? So the only unknowns: this coefficient, this coefficient. So then, how do we solve for those two coefficients? Use the initial conditions. So then, what do we do? V at t equal to zero. Okay, so that's e to the zero. And then c1 cosine of zero plus c2 sine of zero. Okay, so then that's it, right? Like this. So that wasn't too bad. And then how do we get the other one? dv by dt at t equal to zero. Okay, so then we just need to take a derivative of this. So product rule again. So take the derivative of that. And then all this, just leave it alone. Plus leave this alone. And then take the derivative of all this, right? So take a derivative of this, omega d c1 sine, oh, with a minus sign, omega t plus omega d c2 cosine omega d t. Okay. And then, right, and then this is just the same. sine omega dt, sorry, it's messy, right? And then evaluate at t equal to zero. So minus alpha e to the zero, and then c1 cosine of zero plus c2 sine of zero. Okay, so just like that, plus e to the zero, so that's one. And then right here, that's sine of zero, so that's gone. And then omega d c2 cosine of zero. So there we go. And this we can get from these just like before. So we have two equations, two unknown, right? So then you just solve for c1, solve for c2, you got both coefficients. Okay, so then seems like a lot, but once you start practicing and just plugging in numbers, the more you practice, the smoother it'll get. So just give these a try and let me know if you have questions. I'll see you on the next video.